Hey guys, just here shooting another Tip Tuesday, and I thought I would do one on uh, bandsaw tensioning, uh, blade tensioning. Now, the way that I do it is not any big secret. It's the way a lot of people do it. It's the uh, method recommended both, at least via the phone, uh, by my bandsaw manufacturer, which is Grizzly, and by the blade manufacturer, which is uh, Timberwolf. And it's called the flutter method. Um, most people, when they tension their bandsaws, they just use the gauge on the back of the saw, which is fine. Um, it's not gonna be the end of the world if you do that. But Timberwolf specifically recommends not doing that because their blades don't require as much tension as you know average blades, at least according to them, or at least according to the packaging um, on the one that I bought. And uh, when I was talking to Grizzly on the phone at one point, they had recommended using uh, the flutter method as well. But that's not the method I see most people using, so I thought I would do it as a quick tip. Now, I do the method of kind of backwards than the normal method, which usually when I see people uh, talk about the flutter method, which what they do is they uh, lower the tension on their bandsaw uh, to the point where it's, it's fairly loose. They run the bandsaw uh, and the blade will start oscillating back and forth, uh, and then they'll tighten it until the oscillation goes away. That's it, right? This is all done with your uh, guides backed off. Um, my only problem with that is that if you run your bandsaw with the blades too loose, your blade's going to slip off and probably get ruined, uh, if not create a safety issue. So what I do is I actually slightly over tension uh, my blade. So I'll start at the recommended value on the back of the saw, um, and then I'll either tighten it or loosen it, um, depending on you know whether or not the blade is still fluttering um, or not. So if it's not fluttering, I'll loosen it until it just begins to flutter, and then tighten it back up. Um, till the flutter stops. That way I know I get the exact right tension. And then if it's uh, still fluttering at the recommended, then I know that the recommended value on the back of the saw is actually not tight enough. In those cases, then I'll just continue to tighten it up. But the difference really between my method and everybody else's is I start with the blade uh, tight and a lot of the other people will start with the blade uh, really loose. So I'm just gonna do it here. It's, you know, it's very, very easy. Again, this is not my method. I just certainly didn't come up with it. But more often than not, I see people just cranking it up to whatever's on the back. And, you know, that's sort of a guess. That's that's a that's a starting point. You know, all blades are different, blade steels are different. And if you overstretch a blade, um, you're potentially going to be one stretching it and two work hardening it and making it more brittle and things like that um, And if you're running with the blade too loose, you're potentially going to be um, Losing blades, you know the blades might be popping off in the middle of your work or at the very least You're going to be experiencing more drift and things like that All I'm going to do start the saw, you know set to the recommended value It should either not be fluttering or be close to fluttering uh, and then I'll adjust it until uh, the flutter goes away and then maybe give it like another you know quarter turn or so just to you know, you know, really tighten it in. Okay, so you see we have some flutter here, right? It's not real bad, um, but it's there. As you can see, if I loosen, you can see the more I loosen the blade, the more that really starts to wobble back and forth. So we don't want that. So we're gonna tighten. over a quarter inch which is, is a quarter inch blade so good job grizzly at least for you know these particular blades so if you found this tip useful please like and subscribe until next time talk to you later youtube